After I did the rear brakes on my Type 3 Fastback, uh, converting them from drums to discs, I didn't show the bleeding process, and I got asked to do that several times. So we're going to demonstrate right here on this 69 Beetle the process of bleeding out the brakes. Uh, the fronts have been converted to discs, the rears are still the stock drums. The process is still more or less the same. Um, there's about three different methods that I can think of. There's two active methods and there's one passive method, and I'm kind of an active guy, so we're going to go with the active ones. But the active ones consist of either pumping that brake and having somebody release the valve, or pumping it with a vacuum pump and sucking the air out of the line. And the third one, which is the passive way, um, is just open the valves and let the fluid flow through, but that takes too long. And I'm not one that likes to wait. I'm somebody that likes to see progress immediately on this type of job. So we're going to go with the active methods, and I'm going to demonstrate both of them in this video. As always, if you like my videos, thumbs up. Please click that little subscribe button down below there, ring the little dingle belly next to it. That uh, gives you notifications every time I upload a new video. So we're off to this project. Thanks for watching. So I'm coming at you today from inside of a tropical storm. Above me here is uh, Tropical Storm Alberto. And we're about an hour or so from being hit by the uh, this core of the storm. And that's going to be the strongest part. The winds, as you can hear, have been uh, pretty strong for the last 24 hours. The rain has been hit or miss. I actually got a service call to Tallahassee um, to go handle some computers for, for late last night around midnight, but there was no way that I could make it from Pensacola to Tallahassee without dealing with the storm nonsense as well as a lot of the evacuees that are trying to get away from it. So with that said, I'm going to try to hammer out as much of this as possible today before it rains, and uh, this is not a hard process. It'll probably happen, so please stick around and watch. Okay, this is actually a really easy job, and demonstrating the tools that are necessary really isn't much to it. You're going to need a wrench, and this is a wrench to open up the bleeder screws that are on the uh, front and rear brakes that are on your car. Now on the case of a Volkswagen, these things are weird. They're not always the same size. I've seen them as small as um, six millimeters all the way up to ten millimeters and sometimes they don't always match from front to back and sometimes they're even American sizes. But in this case I, I pre-sized them and it turned out there's an eight in the back and a seven in the front. And like I said it's, it's, it's really there's no consistency to it so make sure that you have the proper tools before you get started. Uh, I got my sucky sucky five dollar tool and I've also got some DOT3 brake fluid. You can use four or three interchangeably, no problem. Stay away from the silicone. And I'm going to tell you that only for one reason, and that's because you may have some older fluid in the lines, and this stuff does not mix well with silicone. So if you put silicone in the lines, you're going to end up with brake fluid uh, incompatibilities and other issues. Now, if it's a brand new braking system that's never seen any fluid before, you can use silicone if you want. Uh, I don't see any advantage to using silicone in, in the case of an old Beetle. You know, that's for like racing application, um, so yeah, I, I don't think that's necessary. Uh, it's nice that the silicone does repel water. It's not hydroscopic like typical DO3 or 4 brake fluid is. This, this has a tendency to pull water into the system, which is one of the reasons why your brake fluid comes out kind of rusty when you flush the system out. But uh, yeah, this is what we're going to use today. As you see, the operation is really simple, and the first thing you're going to want to do is um, fill up your master cylinder to the top and make sure that there's no leaks in the line, so we're going to do that. Okay, first you want to locate your master cylinder brake reservoir. There it is up there. This is on a late model Beetle that has a dual circuit uh, master cylinder. What dual circuit means is there's two, two inputs here, and one circuit goes to the rear, the other circuit goes to the front of the car. And it's set up that way on purpose, so if one of your circuits fails, you can still stop your car. Now if you have an earlier Beetle that has a single, single reservoir, there'll be just one single hose coming out of it and it will probably live up here under the spare tire and I believe it's usually off to the right. Don't confuse it with your windshield washer bottle. It usually sits right next to it. If you put the brake fluid in the wrong one, well, it's going to eat the paint off of your car. <laughs> so we're going to start up here first. Alright, here's our master cylinder reservoir. We're going to fill that up to the top.
And when I say the top, I truly and really mean the top. And the reason for that is, is because as we start pushing that fluid through, that level is going to drop. So we're going to have to come back to this thing and check it regularly. Uh, put your cap back on it. I don't even bother to tighten it. I just put it there. It stops debris from falling in it. And then cap up your brake fluid bottle. Put that in a safe place. In fact, it's fine right here because you're going to find yourself refilling that periodically. Now, the master cylinder is right there. These are the lines that go up to the reservoir. So check those lines and make sure that there's no leaks. If you have any leaking, stop now, fix it. Because you need to take care of that first. You don't need your reservoir running down and then not having brakes in the future. This is also, on some beetles, and this, this one is one of them, this is kind of a high spot. So what happens is air gets trapped in the line right here. So I find that you push these down, and if you're looking down inside the master cylinder, I don't know if you heard it or not, but you could actually see the air coming out of it. <laughs> Yeah, that was the air that was trapped in the lines because that was kind of a high spot. And uh, that's one of those things they don't teach you in the book. That's one of those things you learn from experience. So, yeah, push down on those lines and make sure that that low spot or high spot becomes a low spot and that air can get out of it and escape into the master cylinder, which, as you notice now, is no longer filled right up to the top anymore. So, yeah, let that air out of those lines. Okay, we're good there. Master cylinder here in America is on the driver's side, which is the left. And usually you want to bleed the wheel that's furthest from the master cylinder first. Because this is a dual circuit braking system, front and rear does not share fluid anywhere except up at the reservoir. There's no reason why you couldn't do the front right wheel first. That is actually possible. Or the left, or the right rear wheel is also possible to do first. In this case, it really doesn't matter. But just for the purists out there, they're going to tell me that I'm wrong. We're going to demonstrate it by starting at the right side rear first. Okay, we're going to go with the uh, classic pump method. And one of the reasons why I'm going to do that first is because the bleeder screws are extremely rusty. And this will stop you from getting a really good seal using the uh, rubber tube. So you can't get adequate suction on it. Now the little bleeder valves up front, these are actually brand new and they will seal up just fine with a new hose on it. So I won't have any problems here using the vacuum method. The vacuum method is nice because it's a one-man job. It's really a two-man job or you know a man and his girlfriend or you know two ladies that really like each other can do the job just the same. And the trick is in here to get on that pedal, the brake pedal which is in the middle, and pump the hell out of it. Give it a good, I don't know, four or five good pumps and hold it to the floor. While you're holding it to the floor, your partner will come back here with a hose on this bleeder screw. And you will loosen it. And wait about a second or two. That pedal will go all the way to the floor. And looking for air bubbles and or fluid that comes out. And once you get a good stream of fluid with no air bubbles in it, that's when you know it's time to tighten this one up. Stop and go to the next wheel. So, getting started, here we go. Let's grab that hose. Okay, back here at the bleeder screw on the right-hand rear side, I've got the wrench put on first, so that way we can easily loosen it. I've got the hose slipped on the nipple next. Then you want to take this hose, and you want to route it up. And up is important because air bubbles will rise. So find a way to put it up and about doesn't matter if it's on a little bit of an angle, but you want it to go up and out like that. That is adequate. So as we let the fluid in to this line by pumping it and releasing the valve here, you'll see the bubbles escaping. And then this other end of the hose goes down into a catch jar to catch all the drippings that come out. So that way you don't have a mess. All right, let's go ahead and grab the tripod and get started. Try to get yourself some good help together, uh, so you can get a friend that actually makes sense and knows what he's doing, somebody that has a little bit of technical expertise, or somebody that knows how to listen. Try to get them to help you, and uh, <laughs> without the help, you won't be able to really get this method done properly. That'll work. I'm going to help. <laughs> All right, pump it. What? I said pump it. What? Come on, pump it! No, hit the pedal in the middle. Alright. Oh. That's more 
more like it. Thank you. Now hold it. All right, let's see what we get out of here. Now look at that. We already got some fluid flowing out of it. Okay, repeat. Pump it. And hold. I don't see any air bubbles yet. Now these brakes have not been pumped at all until now since the reservoir was disconnected so there's a possibility that there's no air in them. These rear brakes might actually be bled just fine. The air may be way up the line so sometimes this takes a few times to pump it, sometimes depending upon the length of your line, the diameter of it, the efficiency of your master cylinder, this may take a dozen or more times to pump it to make sure that that air comes out. But what I'm really looking for is clear fluid and this is a, a little dark so this is certainly older fluid that's been in the line. Okay, pump! And hold! Yeah, it's still, still no air. Pump! Alright, and hold! Still, that fluid is dark. I'm going to reroute this hose a little differently here. Because it keeps falling down. Alright, go ahead and pump. And hold. time we saw a little air. That may be the beginnings of it. All right, and pump. Okay, and hold. Yeah, we got a little more air. Actually, a lot more air. All right, and pump. And hold. Yeah, we're getting more air. Also, much dirtier fluids coming out. Okay, and pump. And hold. Yeah, it is air bubbles in there, and that fluid's getting dirtier and dirtier. Okay, we're going to continue to flush. Pump. And hold. No more air, but that fluid is almost black. Dirty, nasty stuff. Yuck. All right, and pump. And hold. Uh, it looks like it's getting a little cleaner. It's not black anymore. And pump. And hold just in time for it to start raining. All right, we're gonna gather everything up and we're gonna run inside the shelter because it's starting to come down pretty heavily. We're just gonna have to come back to this later. The rain stopped as fast as it started, so we're gonna go ahead and resume this again. So uh, go ahead and pump. All right, and hold. <laughs> and it just started raining again, unbelievable. Well, I'm gonna keep going until I get soaked. I don't see any reason to stop. So, uh, pump! And hold! Mm, a little air still coming out of it. Fluid is getting cleaner. And pump! And hold! This is always the one that takes the longest because it's just furthest from that master cylinder. And it's going to take a lot to get all that out of there. But as you can see, the fluid is getting cleaner and cleaner every time we pump. And boy, is that catch bottle dirty. Nasty. Wow. Okay. Continuing. Now, at some point, you do want to check your master cylinder reservoir and make sure that it's topped off. In this case, as you saw in that bottle, catch bottle, we haven't actually lost that much fluid down there. 
but uh, just top it off anyway and uh, continue what you're doing. So let's pump and hold. Yeah, it's getting cleaner and cleaner, but it's still quite dirty. Pump and hold. Yeah, it's getting lighter. In fact, it's uh, almost clear. All right, we're gonna pump it at least twice more. And I'm gonna call this side done. Pump! And hold. And pump. And hold. Yeah, it's coming out clear now. That's good. I think the only coloration you see in that line is just whatever was left sitting in the tube here. Plus, it's magnifying the color of my fingers. All right, we're gonna pull this line right off of here. Try not to lose that much fluid. Let it drip down in the tube, which will go down into our catch bottle. Yeah. Take off our wrench. Here it is. And we'll go move around to the other side. Okay, we're going to route that line back up through the body. There's a nice hole there, which was nice and convenient for this. And attach it back to the nipple on here. We've already got our wrench on there. And this side will bleed a whole lot easier. Because there's a, a T just up the brake line. Where the hell is the brake line? This is the brake line over here. There's a T just up the line over here, a very short distance. And since we've already flushed the line all the way from the front to the T, all we've got to do is flush the last few feet of line to this side. So we're going to go ahead and have it pumped over here and release the fluid, same as we did on the other side. This will be a whole lot faster. So go ahead and pump. And hold. Let's see what comes out of there. See? Dirty just like before. And some air. And pump. And hold. Yeah, dirty, dirty, dirty. No air bubbles. I don't think a whole lot of air is going to come out of this line, but it is getting cleaner. It only took two pumps. Okay, and pump. And hold. Yeah, it's getting cleaner very quickly. Yeah, I can almost see through it. Well, actually, I can see through it already. Let's go ahead and give it twice more just for good measure. Making sure, of course, to check that master cylinder reservoir to make sure it's full. And pump. And hold. Yeah, it's getting cleaner. And pump. And hold. Yeah, it's getting a lot cleaner. Yeah, that was easy. It's almost to where it needs to be. I'm going to give it one more time just for good measure. I think we're good, though. And pump. And hold. Yeah, we're good. We're good. That is clean. Yep, clean, good to go. All right, pop this line off of here, and we're ready to go up front. Now, if your friend is too big of an idiot, Look. which I discovered that uh, good old Delmont was, I you can get a sucky, sucky $5 tool. And this is really cool because draw right through the nipple that's up on top here, uh, not the bottom one. In this case, this caliper actually only has one on the top. So when I put these on, it was very important to note where that nipple was because it needs to be on the upside because air rises inside of a liquid. So the air will rise out of this nipple. So we're gonna attach the sucky sucky to that and drawing it just like this, it's now putting a negative pressure on this here, so as soon as we open this valve, it's going to draw fluid out of it. Now you want this routed upwards, just like we had before, so you can see the bubbles escape from it. And it's probably not going to be a whole lot, because this line is not particularly long. 
but just like that we're going to open it and there goes the fluid out of it and there are bubbles in there they're very fine this fluid is uh, quite dirty as you're seeing so we're going to keep drawing on that until we get it crystal clear from all the new fluid that's currently in there now before you do this of course you want to make sure that that master cylinder reservoir and I've said that multiple times in this video but that master cylinder reservoir must absolutely must be full still getting a little bit of bubbles out of there I'm actually rather impressed got to be some still trapped in there sometimes bumping it like this will cause them to dislodge themselves and come out but I'm still seeing them come up through the line yeah still getting some bubbles and those are indeed trapped in the system that fluid is getting clearer and clearer as the old shit washes away and my little catch bottle there is about full and I'm not seeing any more air bubbles here well there was one I think that was just trapped inside of there yeah it's trapped inside the uh, the sucky nipple here let's go ahead and snug this back up I think we just about got this of course my wrench will not apply itself properly here it goes alright this side was easy there was nothing to it the last side we gotta do is the driver side in the front that's the one that's closest to the master cylinder so that's the reason why we're gonna do it last we'll pull this off of here and we're going to have to dispose of all that nasty fluid that went inside the little catch tank here. This is full all the way to the top. Wow. Dump that down below into our jar. And see, look, that's what came out of the system. This is all the old brake fluid that was in the lines. Pretty nasty. Pretty disgusting. All right. Let's go ahead and move over to the other side and get set up. Don't forget to put on your rubber nipple. <laughs> it doesn't have to be there, but it's nice to keep that in from rusting. That way the next time around, if you ever had to bleed these brakes, the next guy that does it can use his little sucky tool without having to worry about rust or something contaminating the fit and causing an air leak. All right, we got a nice vacuum. Release the pressure. through an awful lot of air. We're getting fluid too, but an awful lot of air. Maybe I've got it too far open. Alright, we're going to try sealing that up a different way. got some Teflon tape that I put on that nipple. Oops, I hit the valve on this thing. That's not going to help you any. It looks like we're getting a good seal because I'm not seeing any bubbles come out of here now, which is part of the problem from before. Hey, we got uh, 25 inches of mercury on the vacuum. Let's see what we got here when we open this valve up. 
That's what it's supposed to do. I don't think we're going to see a whole lot of bubbles in there because I've been sucking on this thing pretty good for a while. Shake free any bubbles that might be clinging. And that's it. That sucker's bled. All right. And that concludes how to bleed your brakes. If you've gotten this far and you've watched through this video, this is a really simple process. Uh, you don't need to have all these vacuum tools and gauges as you saw. All you really need is just a wrench, a piece of tubing, and a drip bucket to collect your waste that comes out of there. Make sure you run that tube up and around so that way you can trap the air inside the tube and you can see it moving. Um, really, that's all there was to it. So if you like this video, click the like button, please. Go ahead and... Um, Hit the subscribe button and ring that little dingleberry down here in the corner. I guess it's over this way. <laughs> what the dingleberry does is it makes sure that you get a notification every time that I upload a new video so you don't miss anything. So thanks you guys for watching and uh, we're going to show an upload and we're going to show a video next about uh, these dropped spindles and these disc brakes that we converted on here and the process of how these were installed. So stay tuned for that. Thanks so much. One more thing before you commit yourself to being done. You want to check your brake pedal, there it is. We've got resistance on it. And yeah, it feels like it's supposed to. There's a little bit much play in the front of it here. I'm going to have to check the brake push rod. See how it goes to here before it starts to actuate. The brake push rod in there is probably too short. I need to lengthen it. Those are not supposed to be adjusted, but probably somebody fouled it up sometime in the past, so I'm going to take it apart and fix it. Uh, I also have to make sure that the brake pedals are the correct distance away from the bulkhead because that could also affect how much play is on this here. But anyway, it looks pretty good to me, but that's not part of bleeding the brakes. Just stepping on the pedal, it feels like it's supposed to. It feels nice and stiff. A little squeaky under there. It's going to need some lube on the pedal assembly, but uh, yeah, it's good. That's it. And the last thing you want to do before you do anything else, check your master cylinder reservoir and make sure that it is full. And what I like to do on these uh, old air-cooled Volkswagens, I like to fill right up to the plastic seam here. And this probably isn't going to take a whole lot to get it there. No, it's almost there anyway. That's it, right there. I'm not sure where the high and low lines is on this. There actually are markers. But some of these little master cylinder um, bits don't have it. In fact, that's just a little bit high, but we're going to be fine. Put the cap back on, put the cap back on your fluid, and there's not a whole lot left in there anymore. That was a whole quart. Used almost all of it filling the system up, and whatever else came out of it that got bled out that washed out the old system. So yeah, there it is. How to bleed your brakes on your old air-cooled Volkswagen. Thanks for watching, everyone. Oh my god, I broke it. God, I broke it. I broke it. I broke it. I broke it.